All right, today's show started controversially, Tracy, when we realised that um, we are not treated like the stars that we should be treated. Absolutely, um, Nath, yep. Something was in front of Sean and we were disgusted. We were talking about strangers enraging you oh. and one did to me yesterday at the post office. So you'll hear other people who get fired mm-hmm. up as well. Yes, um, Tracy Vo, I would be talking about dating in this modern <laughs> world, hey? That's right. Very confusing for both women and for men. I actually feel for the men. Yes. Very confusing. Right. We try and break it all down. Yeah, we, we do. do. We, do. Um, we talk about you shrinking, actually, <laughs> yeah. Trace. That's going to get a mention on this podcast for yep. sure. Yep. Um, our Scott, who's been filling in for Ali, went to a concert. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are going to go, oh, that was cool. <laughs> some won't. But anyway. He loved it. And the Outback Wrangler, one. Matt Wright, he's been having a bad day, but someone that was walking in front of him at the airport was having a great day. So we play a bit of that as well. This is Nathan, Nat and Sean. I've got something to talk about right Let's now. Let's go, mate. All right? Because I think um, uh, there will be a lot of confused fellas mm. out there that may see this. There's this girl called Tarsia. And, and women. And Confin- women, yeah, yes. Yeah. There's a girl called Tarsia, right? She's um, living in Melbourne and she has just gone out on a date and she is displeased with what went down. Her friend is filming her. They put it up on TikTok. Um, and this is what she had to say. How did your date go? I don't she, want to do this. I'm so done with men. They're disgusting. They're like... <sighs> she went on a date for two hours. Look at me. Wondering. Look at me. Take me to dinner. Like... Why not dine? You know what I'm saying? Like, don't try and get all this information out of me over one drink that you don't want to pay for. I don't have time for them anymore. Boys, do better on dates. Do better. Right. She's over blokes and they're dating. Mm. Yeah. And she's hot as chips. I'll just put that well, out there. Well, you saying, look at me. She's, yes. So, <laughs> she, she, so she's got a very, her, she's got a very, know. there she is, she's yeah, right in the white oh, dress. She's got a very okay. high opinion of herself. Yeah. And, you know, granted, but she does look amazing. But that shouldn't matter what she you does. look like either. But I've got a take on okay, this. I want to know. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is my take on this, right, is that this guy was asking her questions. Now, she did put in the line there about a, a drink they didn't want to pay for, but then she puts in there as well, wine and dine me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Is it a man's job to wine and dine nowadays? Because it's, everything's changed so much. He seems to, so, so this is what I'm going on. He's there asking her questions, mm-hmm. getting to know her. He's not trying to get her drunk, um, you know, like he's yep. not trying to buy her off. He's trying to actually get with get, get, get to know her on a human level. Mm-hmm. So what's the expectations of a female now out in the dating mm-hmm. world? Is it still that you have to be wined and dined or is it now that we're both on equal footings and we can – actually have a conversation and it's nicer than instead of you shoving booze down my throat Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. showing me that you can pay for dinner, that you want to get to know me. What is it? Talk to me. Sean, you want to go first? Well, I think think that... I think that he needs to take her out and offer to pay for everything mm. to start with because he is just taking her out on a date. And if she said that he's been tight ass in a nutshell, that's what <laughs> we, I got out of that part. Um, and she also said he kept asking me questions, right, which is the part that you're going on and he's trying to get to know her. Yeah. I don't know if he's asking too many. I don't know if he's going 100 miles an mm. hour, whatever the case is. But I think on a male perspective, you've got to offer yeah. to j- still hold up that gentlemanly, I don't know, ideal when yeah. you take somebody out. Mm-hmm. I will say, I mean, recently engaged, so not yep. not on the apps yep. anymore. Thank you, Liam. Don't worry. But going on a few dates before I met wonderful Liam, um, I never expected it. To be honest, yep. I, I would rather just meet the person. And be like, okay, you 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 can gauge yay or nay yes. whether, when you meet the person. But I actually always offered too. I think because I'm probably a bit older. Yeah, you kind of get a from from that. TikTok clip from those girls. Yeah. She sounded a bit immature in my opinion. Yeah. I get it. You don't want to sit there for two hours and have a conversation without having, you know, a meal or a drink, but you can't just expect it either. I'm just more a bit like, I'll offer as well. It doesn't bother me. I just want to get to know you and and pretty much wrap it up but as, as fast as possible yeah. if I need to. Right? Okay, yeah, yeah. So if, so if, she, if she didn't want to sit there for two hours, just say, you know what, I'm done. I've got something else on. See you later. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So yep. this date could have been merely, let's catch up for a drink. You know what I mean? It might not have been dinner, but it could have yeah. been dinner. But we don't either know. Way. But I'm saying we don't. Well, we're we don't saying, know. But you, you're saying yes. it's like it's. You're acting like it's dinner. I'm saying it could be. Yes, but you're acting like for it's the other way. No, 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 no. I'm no. I'm not acting like. I'm saying this. It could have been. Let's catch up for a drink as well. So we don't know the context. No, if we'll I would tell my is. sons. I would tell yes. my sons that they're taking out their partners or they're going on a date. Offer. Yes. To yep. offer to buy them dinner and offer to buy them a drink, whatever the case is, um, straight off the bat, just be a gentleman as much as you can. 
And they, no one has to accept that. You can go, no, I've got it covered. That's right. I've yeah. got that's it covered. Right. No, you don't have to do that. No problem at and all. And that's all good. I just, yeah, I'm a bit, I don't know about this. I don't know. I just feel that they're a bit immature. That's yeah. my that's, opinion. That, that's yeah. our opinion. <laughs> yeah. That's our yeah. Opinion. yeah. It's time to stop putting off your trips and start celebrating summer with an amazing getaway. Whatif.com has all kinds of accommodation options all around Oz. Check them out on the What If app. What If? It's Aussie for travel. <laughs> it's going to be really, really confusing um, these days for some young men. Um, let's go to Rachel in South Yonder. Up. Hey, Rach. Morning, guys. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rach. So we're talking about what women these days expect when they're out on a date. Look, 100%, I believe that the guy should offer. Every single time, just offer. And for me personally, if I'm really into the guy, then I'm going to probably let him pay for a meal or pay for a drink at least. Yep. If I'm not really into him, then I'm going to pay for myself, mm-hmm. for sure. So if he doesn't offer straight off the bat there, Trace, cause, uh, sorry, um, Rach, if he doesn't offer, you uh, you off him kind of straight away because he hasn't come out? With that? Oh, for sure. There's a little bit of like, you know, it's the right thing to do. It's the gentleman thing to do. At least offer me a drink or, you know, I think that you know, every bloke should know to offer a girl a drink or if you've asked, if you've asked her out on a date, then I think the intention is, is that you're either going to offer for dinner or offer for a drink, for sure. Would you, know you have what? sat there for two hours on one drink on a date? Uh I like to drink, so no. I <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, I don't, I don't think I'm, I'm with you, lunch. Rachel. <laughs> yeah, it's um, but like I honestly think that this over the next twenty years or so will be changing because kids these days don't. They're not, they're not as tied to tradition as what we were. No. So this is because it's tradition that men take a women out and they mm-hmm. pay. Mm-hmm. I reckon in about 10 to 20 years, that's going to be phased out because I think kids these days see each other more as equals and as partnerships and I think that relationships become less transactional. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But uh, let's go to um, Jason in Naranda. Hey, Jace. Uh, yeah, I definitely think the first, I don't know, if you're going out for coffee or meet up for drinks that you, the gentleman fits the bill, Yep. I mean, it's just, you know, common courtesy. Uh, first dinner, then the man fits the bill. I mean, eh, no issue with that. I mean, generally by a third or fourth day, if it's either male or female who organises it, I think they sort of, you know, um, look after the bill. And after that, you're sort of setting a foundation for the relationship and everything's 50-50. Okay, so yeah. first yeah, date, uh, yeah. so first okay. couple of dates you pay? Yeah, I mean, yeah, generally, you, you know, the co- you go for coffee, coffee. or go for drinks yep. for you. You know, you look after the bill. It's just, you know, common courtesy. Yep. Um, if it's like a first dinner, you definitely, you know, look after the, um, the bill, you know, show you that you're keen, um, respectable and so forth. I mean, last thing you want to be going, oh, let's, let's split the bill and you go, and the, the, definitely the female's going to go, yeah, you know, if he's not looking at, you know, some sort of support, but that's because generally speaking, that's what females look for, support. Hey, Where yeah, hey, males are looking for, you know, general Looking at, oh, okay, is the person going to be, you know, um, attractive, um, healthy and so forth? Yeah, a companion. Hey, Jace, okay, so you're out on the first date, right? Okay. You yep. go to pay at the end and she says, no, I'm paying. What do you do? Yeah, what do you do? Uh, I mean, I generally, I'd just say, like, oh, I'm happy to pay the bill, but if she proceeds and wants to, I'm, I'd just go, um, how about we just, you know, do 50-50 or um, more, I'd more, more likely say, so, how about um, you pay for the nickname? But okay, she says no. No, no, no. But yeah, Jace, boys, but Jace, <laughs> but Jace, she says no. I'm yeah. paying for the bill. Then she obviously doesn't want another day, another date. Oh, oh, isn't that there interesting? You go. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Let's go to Angela Merrill. Hi, Ange. Hello, Ange. Morning. Hi. Um, so yeah, my, my thing is, I have two sons, yep. and I've always. I'm old school, so you treat a lady like a lady. Yeah. But my sons have, have gone out with girls who then, well, why are you treating me like that? I'm independent. I don't need a man in my life. Mm. But then generation. They turn, yeah, but then they turn around and they want the guys to buy them things because, well, that's what you should do. I'm your girlfriend. Yeah. Well, hold on. You just said you didn't want me to treat you like a lady because you're independent. And, and I mean, they come home and, and I can, I your feel for them. Pull the hair your out. poor son's head. They want to pull the hair out, Ange. <laughs> and then, of course, it's, it's put online because, you know, that's what every, every young lady does nowadays. It's got to be posted on the grab. And, and I feel sorry for the young guys today because they try and do the right mm. thing. But then they turned around and they get slammed for doing it because 
they didn't treat a woman as being independent. Oh, <laughs> so, my God. Yeah, that's... This is so funny. Because I, yeah. well, I think, you know how I said, I reckon it's in 10, 20 yes, years we're going to have a different now. thing. I, I think this is the transition period yep. and it's confusing. <laughs> it is. Oh, and I don't think you're at where, at where it's going to end mm-hmm. for this next generation. Mm-hmm. Nath, I think you're right. But I think um, whilst a lot of things are changing in all different ways, there's... Cobble and courtesies shouldn't change, yes. and maybe yes. a, 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 a man or a boy can always be a gentleman with yeah. who they're going yeah. out with, yeah. and that but might be a part of it. We just heard from Jace as well. I, Jace just said that um, if um, the woman demanded that she pay on the date, he said then she man, obviously doesn't want another date. date. So what? does it go back either way? Oh, I'd take it, money. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's it's confusing. <laughs> and that's not wrong for you, Jace. It's just confusing. Can I get the ice cream? Amazing. Anyway. I feel sorry for Andrew's sons. Yep, oh, me too, Ange. We're picking up what you're putting down. Well, that was yeah. very interesting. <laughs> Look at us, mate. I felt like I we the view then. It's fantastic. <laughs> the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Yesterday uh, I went up to the post office because I was looking to um, uh, get my daughter a new passport. You know, they, when they're younger, they you know, they only last for five years. And I was just checking it the other day, not that we've been able to travel, but yeah. now that we can, I just thought I'd check it. Anyway, hers is out. I needed to get it done. So I got all the info, Nath, mm. as you do. Just go up to the post office, wait your turn and get served and it's done. Well, Pretty there you easy go. stuff. Bob's your uncle. You're out of there. Quick trip. Yeah. The only problem is when I got there, I thought, okay, so there's a lady at the front. She's um, um, getting served at this point in time there's only a couple of people in front of me this is only going to take a couple of minutes I'll be out of there and by the way can I just quickly cut in here Mm. and this is at the post office and this is at most places nowadays they've only got two people serving you that's all it's unbelievable and at the post office because I had to go there the other day they used to have that self-service area where you scan your bills why'd they take that away why do they take that away oh, when they're not why. putting more people on the thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree wholeheartedly with that. Anyway. I, I don't make any sense at all. But you know, I'm in the line, and uh, I was thinking, as I'll be out of here in a second. And at the best of times, I've got zero patience. Oh, and you've I got don't like none. waiting for anything. No. So, but knowing that I'm so close, that's not going to take too yeah. long. and be out. Yeah. Anyway, this lady, she kept talking to the mm. poor lady behind the uh, desk. The, um, the post Australian post lady, and she's wanting to find out why her package previously went to another place before coming to the post office. I was so out in Palmyra. Her package was missing. No, she's got it now. But so her she has was the package, missing. so she wants to know the previous itinerary of the package in yep. detail. In detail, and she's Even speaking she's super got loud. It. And the post office lady kept saying, "Oh, I'm not sure about this. I um, mean, you know, it's come from there. Here it is, type of stuff." And she said, "It'd be really, really helpful if we know how how it got to this point." Meanwhile, obviously, this is taking longer. The lady's trying to find out information. She didn't have it. She kept asking her the same question. You know, oh, look, I just feel like I just can't. Until we get the bottom of this and find out exactly why it's gone that way, you know, it could happen again. I don't care. I'm standing in the line. I just want to pelt one of those because there's all those. Um, oh, there's such great rubber. Buys. rubber. Yeah, there's yes, great buys. There's, great there's buys these really right rubber there. Uh, balls there. And that's when you don't realise, oh, maybe I do need a $45 drone. <laughs> like, there's <laughs> such great things to pick up at the point of sale area. Yeah, I was getting like, furious and this kept taking place. She turns around to the line at this stage, just getting a few longer, and she says, I'm really sorry, but I just need to get the bottom of it. So this. she's turning around saying that to Yeah, her, I'm really sorry, I'm really everyone. Sorry. Well, you're I'm not sorry. really sorry because you're not shutting up. Yeah, yeah. So and she, you've got your package. Yeah, she's got a package. So. She kept talking and the lady's doing her best to help her out because she didn't want to turn her away because she wasn't going anywhere. She just literally wasn't going. And this went for another 15 minutes. And by that stage, the line at the post office was out the door into Woolies. I'm not kidding you. I was furious. Furious. Yeah. Strangers like that, what are they doing? Why are they taking up so much time? Why are they thinking that their time is better or val- more valuable than anyone else's? I tell you what, and especially since post-COVID, we've all got a short fuse. Like, you know, we can't tolerate too much. Um, this person enraged me, but more so about how it made me feel. I was at the shops the other day and there was a guy in the shops shopping in a big silk Japanese kimono. <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, you and, and, like, you and he was wearing with like these slidey slippers on. And I was like... Are you si- and everyone's looking at him <laughs> <laughs> with his pan pipes? And I'm like, what, what are you doing? Like, it was, uh, what are you doing? Like, don't be here in a kimono. <laughs> like, do you know how this is making me feel? <laughs> I know how it made you feel because you told me yesterday and you weren't happy at all. Anyway, so I picked up a pack of the ch- chicken teriyaki and pelted it at his head, <laughs> and then he that was that. It. Nathan, Dad, and Sean. Our Sean McManus was upset yesterday at the post office. 
Well, a lady kept taking her time, Nathan. She was taking everyone's time. In fact, there was only a couple of people in the line. Next thing you know, the line is out the door. Man, she didn't care. Mate. She just wanted her time in the sun. You know what it is? Strangers, listen to me right now. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. You know what I mean? Michael's in Waikiki. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Hey, guys. How you going? Hey, oh, good, Sean's not happy, Michael. Um, has a stranger upset you? Uh, as early as last night, actually. I went down to the um, the Jack Johnston and Ziggy Alberts. Uh, gig at Kings Park. Oh, my son the was there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, awesome, great weather. Yeah. Jack Darling was there. Saw him, embarrassed him a bit. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I was his annoying person. But um, yeah, so we had these um, these four ladies, you know, middle aged, uh, sort of elderly, and I'm pretty sure they were there with their daughters. And they sort of asked if they could sit right in front of us. I mean, right in the doorway where you sort of get into the seating area and all that. Yep. And we said, yeah, that's fine. And they sat there and. Um, they probably, they got there a bit late. They probably spent a bit too much time at the pub beforehand because they were just loud, drunk talking the entire time during oh, Ziggy Albert's set. Oh, and we could barely hear over them talking. I remember one was talking about their friend with lupus disease and then she started talking about her arthritis and all that. And, oh, my God, it was just terrible. Oh, man. <laughs> Could not hear a bloody thing. Uh, <laughs> you, I'm sick sorry. Friends. You don't ask to sit like, <laughs> uncomfortably close to someone and in front of them if you're going to sit there the whole time and bang on about your weak wrists. <laughs> Michael. Michael, I appreciate that. All night, Michael? Uh, uh, well, a couple of them would leave on and off, but then as soon as they would come back from the bar, it would be even worse. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then their daughters would come and, oh, God, it was just terrible. Did you, did you, did you say? Know, other than that, it was all right. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you say anything to them? Because it's, it's always a thing nowadays, do I say something to the stranger that's doing something wrong? Oh, yeah, there's some sort of sneaky remarks like, oh, the talking section's over there, I think. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're like, I heard them say, oh, oh I love Ziggy, I, I love Oh, Jack Johnson, I'm like, oh, well, how about you just bloody listen to him, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, your jaw doesn't have arthritis. <laughs> They've given it a rest. Thanks, Michael. Uh, um, let's go on to another Michael. Michael from Bell Divers. Michaels are upset right now. Hey, Michael. Oh, look, I'm always upset with uh, a particular, particular person that used to make me um, upset. I, I, again, I qualified chef. I did it for 10 years before changing trades. Yep. One thing, I had an argument, stand-up argument one night with a, a customer asking for garlic aioli. Now, <laughs> aioli means garlic mayonnaise. <laughs> there is no need to put garlic in front of it, and they will not refuse to go, no, 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 I want aioli. And they look, couldn't they, listen to reason with you telling them, no, that it, it, you don't have to I, say I still have arguments with people in calls. When really? people go, oh, I'll have garlic aioli. It's like, it's not garlic aioli. Aioli means garlic mayonnaise. You don't need to have the word garlic in front of it. <laughs> I feel My you. My wife st- refuses to go down the aisle and calls with me. She <laughs> just refuses, flat out refuses because I have arguments with people. So you would not, she would not go with you down the condiment aisle? <laughs> no, no, she refuses. Anywhere, even a restaurant, if somebody has it on the menu, I will complain. <laughs> you will. I'm probably the stranger who upsets other people sometimes because I am the one complaining about garlic. Hey, Michael, you know what I'll complain about, like, you know, in my head, and to the people at the table, um, never to the person because I don't have the guts unless Sean Zara makes me, um, <laughs> is crispy bacon. When someone goes to the point of writing crispy bacon on a menu and then you get flaccid bacon, that, oh, that grinds my gears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do yeah. you think, Michael? By standard. Standard bacon should always be crispy. Oh. There should there is no no excuse for soggy bacon. No That's excuse. Ham. I'm not eating eating. That's soggy right. bacon is bacon. ham. Yes. <laughs> We spoke to the right man this morning. God, he's upset. Thanks, Michael. We yeah. feel your pain there. Kerry's in Bell Divers too. It's a hot bed in Bell Divers, Nate, this Mate, morning. Hey, Kerry. Upset. Hey, guys. How are you? Good yeah, good, Kerry. mate. Good, good. mate. Um, What's well, got you go? Yeah. So it was probably about 20-odd years ago. Uh, it was Christmas. I'm glad you let it go. <laughs> 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 uh, it was pretty hectic at the shops. Um, I'm trying to get to the shops with three kids, a four-year-old, a one-year-old, and a newborn. Yeah. So getting them all out of the car and I see a trolley so I think I'll grab that, you know, make it easier to get into the shops yep. and as I walked over to it, there was an elderly couple standing nearby mm. and the ladies kind of rushed at me and she's gone no, that's mine mm. um, and I thought, okay, but as she's gone to rush for it, she tripped over, face planted <laughs> smashed her face over, was <laughs> bleeding everywhere <laughs> um, so I've had to run into the shops with the three kids, grab security, bring them down they've obviously called her an ambulance and oh, uh, I just couldn't believe it. You know, I'm struggling with three kids and she's so adamant on getting this trolley. She's 
landed on the ground and smashed the glasses. Pra- and, you, and, and you end up helping her out? Yeah, yeah, I have to rush in with three kids. Mind you, a four-year-old, a one-year-old and a newborn yeah, to get yeah. security. Oh, you know, she's bleeding everywhere. Yeah. Um, I was so stressed out. I got in my car and went home. I didn't even go shopping. Oh. And later on that night when I was telling my husband at the time, he said to me, well, you should have just grabbed the trolley and said, well, you won't be needing this anymore. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or just let her on the bu- leave her on the ground and say, yo... Yo, trolley, yo, problem. <laughs> yeah, well, like, no, it was pretty hectic. That's that my trolley hectic. from afar. That's Why my was trolley. she in such a rush to beat you to get the trolley in the first place? Because that was her trolley, Sean. Yeah. You didn't, didn't you I, no appreciate, idea, Carrie. I appreciate the All right, orders. guys, Sean feels better now. You're listening to Nathan, Nat and Sean. Nat's away. Look who's in to fill in for her. Royalty of Perth. Channel 9 News is Tracy Vaughan. Tracy <laughs> Is that a little over the top, you think? Uh, yeah. It's <laughs> a bit OTT. No, no, no. no. Tracy's got, you should see Tracy's rider. Like, it's what unbelievable. What music are you going to play this time, yeah. Harry? Yeah. Oh, no, actually, yeah. when you came in today, you had a full um, uh, well, cameraman no, was, following you. No, Sam's no, following we're doing, And we're doing some... You know, social media love. Nathan had to bend the knee. To I had to bend the did, knee. You did. You we have, finally you, read your demand. You around my boob area. My, hit, my head hit a boob. <laughs> yeah. And I said, Tracy, well, you're not in any danger. Like, that's a bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Just quickly, Sean, I was yes. hearing about what um, annoyed you yesterday. Yes. Like, so fun, I was in a car park in North Perth, um, yes. at the North Perth Plaza. And look, I get pe- that, that car park's quite horrendous. Actually, the sp- spaces are quite small. Yep. There was a lady parked next to my truck, yes. my FJ, um, but she was taking forever to get out. So oh. I'm set. I mean, this is probably a first world no. problem. No, no, no. no this no, is no. a pr- this is a problem. So she just. I, I actually had time to film it because that's how slow she was going to get out of her car park. There was no one next to her. Plenty of space. I don't know what she was waiting for. It was literally just like. Every millimetre, her oh, foot was on the brake. Oh yeah. So that was, un- I actually text Liam. I was like, oh, my God, this you know is what? happening to me right now. I, this is I why guns in America, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why yeah. everyone okay. gets shot <laughs> because That's we true. have got no patience anymore. This didn't happen to me. The other day I was at Maya at um, the Galleria, right, and I was parking my car and as I was waiting to, um, uh, like to park it, I saw a guy. And this guy walks up. He's eating a sandwich, right? And he's got like a coffee in his hand. Next minute, he's put his coffee on top of a bonnet of a car, and then his half-eaten sandwich. Then he's wiped his hands, turned around, looked away, and then walked off and then gone to his car and got in. So he just left a sandwich and on, a someone, coffee else's on car. someone else's car. Really? People these Some days. Some people are strange. They, they are. are. But I feel like maybe COVID has yes. made people strange. Strange and outrageous. Yes. Nathan, Nat, and Sean in podcast form. That whole Matt Wright situation. Mm. Um, so, yeah, the Wrangler, mate. The yeah. Wrangler, Nathan. Yeah, so he flew into Darwin mm-hmm. um, and has now been charged. Yes, yep. yes. Yeah, string charged, of charges. String of charges, um, perverting the course of justice. That, I think just tampering uh, with evidence. evidence. Accusations, of, of course, at yes. the moment. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Or allegations. So, um, yeah, quite a, quite a fiery entrance, though, I oh, think, mate. to Darwin, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, like, it was. With his entourage. And he's, yeah, so, so he's at the airport, right? And then, of course, all the reporters are there asking mm. questions. Do you have anything to say? about the allegations. Did you interview with any evidence? Just a scrum of reporters. Just come statements? out, right? Before this moment happened, yes. there was glass sliding doors, you know, when you have come out of the glass sliding doors. So there's glass sliding doors. They've opened up and there is a guy in front of Matt Wright. This guy has a long sort of straggly beard. Um bit of a bogan. Um, now, he knows who's behind him. He yes. can see the media in front of him. He knows Matt Wright's probably going to have a really bad day, but he took his opportunity and went for it. Up the rabbitos. <laughs> Go the rabbits. Go the rabbitos. Go the rabbits. <laughs> that Up is the great. rabbitos. Go the rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> Darwin or was that in Sydney? It's Darwin. Darwin. Yeah. Oh, wow. Rabbitoh's fan in Darwin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is that not like... That is brilliant. Go, well, oh, well, he's yeah. getting his moment on no Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> Some, you know what? Sometimes you see your moment <laughs> there you go. and you just take it. <laughs> and he took it. you got to be happy with that. This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Our good friend Mitch Norton, we got to see him last week, actually, um, after their home loss, which is disappointing. But I know that they'll be back in the winner's circle come Thursday again. G'day, Mitch. Good morning, guys. Hey, Mitch. Hello, Saw you Mitch. at the client Christmas party. Um, and um, 
God, he got blind, didn't he, Sean? <laughs> oh. <laughs> How many funnels can you do in an hour? It was unbelievable. And then next minute, <laughs> next minute, he's running naked across Optus Stadium. We're like, across the oven. We're like, you can't go on the grass, Mitch. And he's like, I don't care. I just had, to, you know, had to test the pitch out before the, uh, <laughs> the test match. <laughs> I missed out on this client oh, party. Tracy, it was All actually things, disgusting. Mitch. I'm surprised wow. it didn't hit the I press. Know. Yeah, I was supposed to be talking about it now. <laughs> oh, no doubt I'm going to hear about that today. <laughs> now, sure. now, Trace, clearly you'll be, uh, it'll be all over nine news seeing the Wildcats uh, have another victory before the weekend's out, yes, I would absolutely. thought. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we love the Wildcats at nine. But, you do. Um, we, um, but, you know, I think um, it's, it's, we, we always want to support our local teams. I love the Perth Wildcats personally. Yeah. My brother was a basketball player back in the day, so I get a bit starstruck, you know. What do you think of Mitch's you, performances Mitch. so far? This season. Oh, look, I'm not a, no expert. Come on, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying just before we got Mitch up that they were rubbish, Tracy. Oh, come on. No, no, Mitch, do not believe anything the boys Sean, say. Sean, did you hear of them? I I'm actually, I've rocked I, I up exactly today. Like, yeah, hey. exactly. Well, well, Nathan and I said, say it to his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and now she's like, oh, she's backing away. Well, that's it's why like, I missed the client party, because I just couldn't face Mitch. Because <laughs> <laughs> of his disgusting performance, he said. Anyway, Mitch, I think you're amazing. You know that. Mitch, the opportunity yeah. to bounce back, actually, because Brisbane haven't had the best of starts to the season. Um, so this is a really good opportunity to take care of them on the road. Yeah, it is. Um, obviously, they've had a, a bit of a coaching change. Um, so we're not exactly sure in terms of X's and O's and, and what type of plays they're going to run. So I think it becomes a lot more about um, personnel and and uh, who the players are and I guess their tendencies and things like that. So we've been really keying into those um, on the scouting report and, and like you said, it's a big chance for us to get back in the winner's circle. One thing I was looking at a couple of days ago, Jesse Wagstaff was interviewed and he was talking about uh, defence in particular and to be fair, you're leaking points massively this season more than you have done in recent memory. Where do you start with if there's so many, he said there were so many different issues, so where do you start with to try to nail down I guess, one whole area yeah. so you can improve yeah. in that. Because the weird thing is, with defence, I've been to games, you should really be on that because people are going, defence. <laughs> so the reminders <laughs> yeah, the entire game. We get plenty of reminders. <laughs> You're exactly right. There's plenty of reminders there. Um, so we should have someone yeah, going, stop over-talking. <laughs> <laughs> stop over-talking. <laughs> and we stop over-talking, though. And we would, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, yeah, so I guess for us... Um, it starts. It kind of starts on the offensive end, which sounds a little bit funky. But okay. um, if it's a predictable shot, yep. um, you know we, we can all react uh, as the ball's in the air and get to our positions for the offensive rebound or or pick up points. Um, you know where we get to guard the guys up the floor a little bit more, so they're not flowing into offense. Um, they don't have as much time down their end of the floor. So um, for us, I think it starts there. Um, and, and I think you know I can definitely. See that off on, the, on a good note, um, and then and then from there, I think it's it's communication solves a lot of issues. Um, you can sometimes be in the wrong spot or, or make the wrong call on an on-ball screen, but as long as it's loud and assertive and, and everyone can hear you, um, communication does cover up a lot of a lot of uh, little issues there. So I think that's probably the two main areas we can focus on, um, because as you said. Uh, we go through, you know, good patches of defense, and then we'll have a two-minute lapse. Yep. Um, and in that two-minute period, we we do let in a fair few. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the the focus for us. Mitch, one thing that really gets my goat um, at this point of the year is, Ooh. and I think it's a lot of people, and this is not to do with basketball, this is to do with my own job, and that is meetings. Sean, <laughs> don't you reckon? We just, you've got zero tolerance for meetings. I read Elon Musk the other day said that yeah. he doesn't like meetings. Yeah. Um, Tracy, how are you with meetings? Oh, no. Oh, it's just like, it's just, shut up. You, you'd have more meetings. Our producer though. Amy oh, with our oh, old yes. boss, she used to have to go, about, go and have a meeting about the meeting they were about to have. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. What are basketball yeah. meetings like? Yeah, so uh, I guess it, it most of it revolves around video, um, either of what our are you past watching? game. Goonies, <laughs> <laughs> Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Def- <laughs> definitely our either our last game or oh. or the team we're about to play. So a yeah. lot of our meetings do revolve around yeah. um, sitting down in the same chairs, watching um, you know video clips of either one things we're doing well or two. Generally, things we're not doing so well uh, and can improve on. So um, for us, yeah, it's, it's all mainly video analysis, 
um, when it comes to meetings, I guess, yeah. And do you have to act like you're enthusiastically (laughs) watching that the entire time? Because we can let our eyes roll and complain. You're not allowed to do that, are you? No. Uh, Yeah, good luck. Uh, You can try. Um, But I don't think it's going to go too well. Uh, And Sean, I'm sure you're more than aware of. Oh, yeah, the negativity and stuff. They say for every lick of the ice cream, you get 10 Mm. kicks in the ass, and that's what Mm. happens. There you go. Here's all all this stuff that you did wrong. And, oh, look, you shot shot a goal. Yeah, well done. Okay. But you only remember remember all the other stuff. Oh, Mm. I couldn't. Exactly, yeah. Uh, well, Mitch, yep. we wish you all the best for tomorrow night's game. It's going to be an absolute ripper against the Brisbane Bulls. I'm sure you can get the victory, mate, and lead the team uh, on a, a bit of a hot streak. Yep, that's the plan. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate Good on you, mate. Mitch. Love you, Mitch. Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. It's an absolute treat to be catching up with Australian legend Ash Barty, who's recently recently retired, as we know. She's a three-time Grand Slam winner, and she's written a memoir, My Dream Time. Mm-hmm. Ash, Good morning. Morning, guys. Thanks for having me. Ash Barty, did you write this by yourself? I had some help with some very good people around me. I've been very lucky throughout my whole career and my life in both professional and personal to have very good people around me. So I I definitely had good people guiding me, um, but it was a lot of fun to to sit down and and write it with a collective team. Oh, my God. So, okay, log cabin, um, um, <laughs> like a, a desk by the beach, an old stately home, um, antique tire product. Talk to me. What was our process? More, more so leaning towards in my backyard uh, with a beer in hand, watching my husband <laughs> fertilise the grass. <laughs> so this has got the distinct same smell same, of I blood and bone on it. I created the visualisation in my head. It's um, all the same. I'm glad he gave you some inspiration for your memoir, Ash. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hey, Ash, uh, you just mentioned having a beer. A lot of the stuff when I was reading through, a lot of the times when you finished a major tournament and you were able to have some let-down time, it was a beer. Mm. It was pizza. And I always seem to pick up that you you like a hot chips. Hot oh, chips. Oh, I, I don't mind hot chips. I think everyone kind of likes hot chips, don't oh, they? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Where's, where's the best hot chips? Where do you get the best oh, hot wow. chips from? Oh, um, wow. No, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a connoisseur. I don't know. Uh, I, I just, I just know good ones when I when I can taste them. See, because I think Hungry Jacks has set their their their, their chips up. Um, their chips are now amazing. But also, you, do you guys have jesters over where you are? Jesters. I pies? think they're only in Victoria. Oh, I don't think in Queensland. Pies, no, 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 I never chips. heard of it. Amazing. Mm, they do great chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, um, as starting this book, you actually went through uh, a big time loss that you had at Wimbledon to kick things off instead of I don't know. Um, I don't know, building into that mm. moment and you just kind of went straight into it in these memoirs. That was interesting. Yeah, I think for me it was it was a really pivotal moment in my career. It was probably, it was probably the defining match um, that helped me find success. It was the defining match that the choices after that, you know, after that experience at Wimbledon it probably could have gone one of two ways and um, we we chose the positive way. We, we chose change and we chose to, to become better, and I, and I think if I didn't, that was probably the moment for me that that really was the catalyst for the rest of my career. Because if I didn't make that positive change, I probably end up being a, an average, you know, fifty to seventy-five player in the world, grinding along, not really fulfilling, um, finding fulfillment in myself or in my in my passion. So I think for me, that was probably the most important chapter to write. It was it was a really difficult one. I, it yep. was it was one I cried a lot. Um, mm. I. It was almost really therapeutic. It was it was a way for me to almost close that chapter mm. as well. And I okay, from that experience, it was a really tough experience, but I learned from it and, and I was able to gain something positive out of it. And if I didn't, I think it's probably a chapter and a moment and a match that, that's filled with a lot of regret. You're far from average, Ash, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, Ash, I guess because you were saying it was quite cathartic to write this memoir Reliving those moments again, I mean, they, were they still extremely vivid for you, trying to sort of go through that process, get it all in writing um, and have to, you know, sort of relive those moments again for you? Massively so. And we, we started transcribing back, way back in 2018, 19, uh, and, and we'd often do do chunks of it, important parts and chunks of the book um, really fresh. Uh, so, like, for, for example, last year after the French Open, um, going through that injury, we did the transcribing kind of my thoughts and emotions while I was waiting for my scan. Um, you know, it was, it was yep. really fresh. So yep. I think a lot of it, I wanted it to be real. Uh, yep. I didn't want to have to remember how I felt. I wanted to be able to talk about how I felt in that moment. Wow. Um, so we did a lot of the, the transcribing cool. pretty much every, every two or three weeks, a quick hour phone call, 
um, to, to get it all down. And, and in the end, we had near 100,000 words um, just on tennis alone. Yeah, uh, and then we we kind of pegged it back a bit to to blend it together. Ash, I want to talk to you about the fact that there are so many people in the Australian sporting landscape which are legends in their own right, but the, the but the, they're not sporting history. You became mm. sporting history. Is that such a huge responsibility? What's the weight of that? What was the feeling of knowing that now you are going to be talked about for generations? Uh, it's a, it's a moment of probably reflection and, and appreciation because I, I felt like I was just trying to to live out my journey as best that I could. And I continue to do that each each and every day now. I'm just trying to, to be the best version of myself. I've never pretended to be someone that I'm not, and and I just think I'm the luckiest athlete on the planet that got to live out my ultimate dream. Uh, I got to do it with people that I love, and I got to share experiences with with people that push me to be the very best that I can be, and to be a very small very small part of, of Australian sport in a sense. We, we have such a rich history across all sport. Uh, you know, today today is one of my favourite days in the calendar. It's first day first day of cricket summer. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's so good. Like, oh, no, I don't know. watching the test? Not. Oh, yeah, I'll be watching it. Um, but I think, like, it's Australians, we're just, we're just sport nuts, aren't we? Yeah. And I think for me as a fan um, to experience and to be able to watch people do what they do and love what they do is really fun. And I think I was just really lucky that, that I got to be on the other side of the rope for... For 20 years living out my, my tennis dream. And Sean, but, you used to say this quite a lot, and we all did when you were playing. Um, you, uh, tennis is seen as a solitary sport, a single, you know, just, just you know, you and the ball and, you know, your challenger. But you were the first person I really feel like um, turned it into a team sport because you spoke about your team mm. so much. Oh, 100%, Ash. That's, and we see that throughout the book, Nath. Um, always mentioning the people who were helping you, your, your psych, uh, your coaches, the people who were right behind you always played a really big part on you progressing through tournaments and then mm. debriefing. Thing. Ash, it was quite incredible to hear you talk about team all the time. Mm. Yeah, it, for me, it was just it was just so important. It was almost a it was a moment for me to, to genuinely appreciate and and kind of probably give my team the acknowledgement they deserve. I always knew that they deserved it, but maybe not everyone surrounding. They always got to see me on the court or me on centre court or me in the media. And they yep. never saw my team because there, there is such a big team. There are so many people that of pieces of the puzzle that helped put me back together, uh, that picked me up when I was down and that helped me through really tough times. And I couldn't do a tenth of it myself, um, absolutely, without them. Uh, I'd, I'd be nothing. So I think more this is an acknowledgement to them for their time and effort and love and commitment and professionalism that they put into my career and their sacrifices to invest in me. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very much and forever grateful to them for that. And, and we have, you know, we, we built relationships over time. Yeah. That is have, that, are, that are like family now, and and what is most special, of, I think, about my entire career is that my relationship with Ties, um, with Crowey, with with Tubbs, my trainer, yep. with my physios, hasn't changed to this day. Uh, you know, we still have the same group chats that we're talking about the cricket or the banter or yeah, AFL, yeah. whatever it is. It's just there's just no more. Okay, we're booking a court at ten o'clock tomorrow morning, or we're playing such and such. Let's let's get ready. It's it, it's amazing that we've been able to flick the switch so seamlessly. Uh, and and the relationships genuinely haven't changed. Um, the fact that everyone was, uh, what's Ash going to do next? What's Ash going to yeah. do next? And it was such a big story, <laughs> and it still is. Ash, say today you had some friends message you and say, "Hey, let's go down to the beach and play some beach volleyball." Do you worry that that's <laughs> going to be the next Ash party is going to play for Australia <laughs> in beach volleyball? <laughs> People are always wondering what you're going. Well, that's and, what and, happened and, with the golf. And, 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 yeah, and, the and golf you keep saying, and, yeah, and you keep saying, "No, no, no, I'm I'm not," but. They just won't let it go. <laughs> I, 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 no, they, yeah. they won't let it go, will they? Uh, but we, we have a bit of fun with it. Uh, we honestly do. I mean, um, I like to take the piss out of myself. I'm always going to. And some of the, some of the memes uh, that I saw afterwards is a jockey and lawn bowl that was cracking up at the So funny. Uh, brilliant stuff. People have got very, very sharp and very quick wit, and I love it. So good. Well, one thing you said in the book about um, once you've climbed the mountain, it's, you know, how do you do that again? You know, mm. it's like p- pushing a boulder up the hill and then it comes back down you re- and you redo it again. And do you, t- I mean, I mean, it's all viewed differently, but say, uh, um, you know, Rafa and Roger, who, uh, Roger in particular, he's just finished up, you know, he's yeah. played for all those things and, and won so many titles. Do you, I wonder often, have they got anything else to do in their life? Yeah. They've got all the money. They've achieved all these goals. How do they keep doing it time and time again? Do you wonder about that, Ash, after now that you've three-time Grand Slam winner? 
Yeah, I, I do, but I think each each career is almost incomparable. I yep. think, um, you know, you, you look at someone like a Roger and Rapper and even Serena in that sense. Yeah. They just love the game. They yep. just love it. They just can't get enough of it. Mm. It just so happens that they're pretty damn good at it. Um, but I, I think they just, they love that. And for me, I love tennis, but I also love other things. I, I love yep. other hobbies and, and, and doing things with my family. And I have other interests and other goals in my life. And Maybe they don't, which is completely fine. That's yep. that's what they want to do. Um, but but I think it's all about that. But when you talk about that climb and kind of pushing the pushing the rock up the hill, it's it's hard, but it is the best bloody climb you'll ever do. And and I really loved every second of it. And now it's just time for me to find a find a different mountain to climb. Uh, so it's, it's still having those same ambitions and dreams and passions and goals. Um, and I think it's just finding what else and, and what other mountains there are. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, rumour going around right now that you're going to be a professional trampolinist. <laughs> Would you like to comment? <laughs> did, did you start that one? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't answer, we know the answer. She's going to double bounce herself into victory. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll say nothing. Let's keep the speculation. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, we really appreciate appreciate your time, Ash. I know that everyone's wanting a piece of you. And it's so funny. You retire. Uh, you go, oh, retirement, that means laying on the beach. But I know you're super busy. We see you everywhere, writing books, writing children. Books. This one's called My Dream Time Ash Barty. Thanks so much for joining us this morning, mate. Great. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Have a good Thanks, Bye, Ash. mate. The Nathan, Nat, and Sean podcast. Sean, did you fill up your car with petrol? Oh, yes, I did too, Nath. Yes, yes. And um, my wife never does, so I always try to get her car. She'll always do it the next day. Oh, you know, you got to get petrol. Hey, it's gone up 40 cents, buddy. That's when she'll pay for it. Well, buddy, it's gone up 50 cents now. <laughs> 50 cents overnight. Unbelievable! Hey, what stuff. did you get yours for yesterday? Did you do it yesterday? Oh, no, no your car's I've got mum and dad's car um, at the moment, and I am picking up my car from Auto Masters today. Um, but uh, it's good though because I've got a really cheap fuel, fuel station yep. um, on Beaufort Street that I go to all the time. I think it, today it's a, it's a dollar sixty three, but everywhere else on average it's it's around two dollars, two dollars for fuel. And I'm telling you right now. Everybody that's listening, and that is when this whole Ukraine situation is over, that price ain't going to drop. I'm hearing you loud I'm and I'm telling clear. you right now, the price of all the food that's gone up at the supermarket, that's not going to drop either. You know why? Because they're going to say, oh, well, they're used to paying it anyway. Yeah, exactly. They've already they've already um, done the damage to us already. Um, I've been doing what, uh, using the Morris Way, which is jumping on Fuel Watch lately. Fuel and Watch che- is and the best. And checking out where it's a, ch- a cheap place to go to. Fuel Watch is the best. And like, you're one of those people that go, oh, wow, a Costco's a bit cheap, isn't it? And then they buy a Costco membership and they drive all the way out there and they realise that they've spent more money than they have <laughs> 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 than just to fill up around the corner. <laughs> so don't be that person. Do the math in your head. But, yeah, 50 cent rise in fuel today, so shop around. This is Nathan, Nat and Sean. Scott, have you told Nathan what you did over the weekend, what band you went to see? I went to the cause. <laughs> <laughs> and where, Scott? I would run away. <laughs> I would run away. <laughs> okay, tell him where. Uh, Hunts Valley. Wow. He went to yeah. Sydney. It's really so nice. nice. Hunter really Valley. Good. Bondi was really good in yeah. Sydney. Then went to you, Hunter Valley. You flew to Hunter Valley to see the cause, or you were there and the cause were playing? No, I flew to Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> so you bought a ticket. I bought a ticket. Um, then I booked a flight. <laughs> It's always creepy their brother being in the band. I don't know why. What did you think? They yeah. were so really? good. Yeah. They were like amazing. Like one of the best concerts I've been to. And just like, it's like feel good music. What other concerts well, have yeah. you been to? Uh, Fleetwood Mac. I big love it. Yeah. I, go to Fle- I go to Fleetwood Mac in a Scott second. A big Fleetwood big Mac. Me too. Mac. Get can. their best of albums. Yeah. That's probably amazing. Uh, the Stevie Nicks. Um, yeah. Celine Dion. That was a pretty good one. Oh, uh, come on. Oh, Adele. Look at you. No, Adele was um, great. Kylie. All oh, right. Yeah. Your um, face. Like to, yeah. Your face like screwed up. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. No, I'm just like. I'm not yeah. hearing any um, ACDC or Bon Jovi or anything in the mix. No, I haven't been to Bon Jovi. Um, I used to go to like Rocket back in the day. You know, like oh, Living yeah, End. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I really enjoyed that. Do they have those good. anymore? Those kinds. Of, I don't even know. No, they do. We just don't go. We're too old. We're too old. We'll go there. Like we're too old for this. Oh my! Real like 16, 17. Yeah, Festival X is on this weekend. My mates are like telling me to go, and like I'm like, no, I'm not going to. Like, what am I going to? Go there and dance. <laughs> <laughs> the Nathan, Nat, and Sean.
podcast. Uh, there was a lot of ha- stuff happening in the AFL draft yesterday, which Fremantle picked up four players. Um, the West Coast Eagles added another three to their list from the day before. So a uh, heap of West Australian young guys got an opportunity to, well, start their dream. I am loving some of the footage of seeing these players with their families. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. an exciting day because those parents and even the brothers and sisters of these players as well, because if you've got a football star in your family, I think everyone lends themselves to getting them there. Yeah, um, they do. All sitting around and just celebrating and going, oh, my God. This could be it. Yeah. This, well, this is it. Yeah, I have, I, I'm with you, mate. I've loved oh. the footage. Everyone just massive mosh pits going. So Everyone's just going absolutely mental. It actually gets me excited for them. It's, yeah. And it's so sweet. And yeah, I don't know. It's the fact, really the, I mean, the, the thing is, they then have now got an opportunity to live their dream. So this is this, just the beginning. But every year, 20, 20 to 25% of the workforce gets axed. So. So many of those players will play one to 20 games and then they'll be done and dusted. And then all they'll ever talk about is those one to 20 games. <laughs> For the what? rest of their lives, their children will hear it, <laughs> the grandchildren will hear it, the partner will hear it, their mates will hear it. When you found out that you were going to be a docker, where were, who, who was around you? Oh, I had a different situation because Fremantle were a new team coming in. So, so I wasn't. Like- I wasn't. I didn't go through the draft. It yeah. was just one of those things where they just go, "These are the players you get." To, they took straight away, yeah, and um, and that was it. So yeah, but I like you still found trying. out where 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 like. Uh, where... Do you remember the the minute the moment? Um, no, I don't at all because I, I just became a matter of fact. Because was what happened. It it, it did. Because <laughs> because what happened is I was <laughs> <laughs> sorry, and then he just strolled into this job. Well, afterwards. I just got to- <laughs> <laughs> wow the struggle of Sean McManus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd done all the work and then Fremantle yeah. coming in, I was told that yeah. I would be in You're going you know, there. just going there and that was it. The draft came along months later and I just knew that I had to turn up to training maybe on something like the 2nd of October and, and get me kid and then start. Can I just say, this is why um, we go and do a chat with Whopper about radio, right? And these people are amazing, these students, and they learn how to do radio and they learn all the stuff that we don't even know still. And every year we tell them that we are the worst people to come in and speak to you because we all got handed our jobs on silver platters. We just like, it, it's very rare to walk straight into a metropolitan radio station breakfast yeah, show. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just been your entire life. I, I know. We, we- <laughs> We are convincing, though, when we speak to them. Oh, we're so convincing. This is a great course to do. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Um, There are a few spots on the rookie list up for grabs, which takes place today, and I think only about 12 to 20 players will be able to get selected to this. And the reason why they put them on a rookie list is really it's cost-saving to starters, but it is an opportunity and a gateway, like anybody else that's been drafted, to then finally crack it and play for your team and hopefully play a number of games. But, yeah, well done to those players. I think it's a minimum probably... I might be jumping ahead though. They might get they might get paid about forty grand. Yeah, right. Fifty grand maybe. Yeah. Um, but it's a full time gig, so it's under award wage. But they have to put in and and hopefully uh, get amongst it and make sure they're successful. But we'll wait and see. Yeah. Um. Uh, Sean Lucy from South Perth. Um. Uh, she picked up um this. Uh, it's tickets to Swish actually at Ra- Ascot Racecourse. Nath, as you said, gather your mates and get suited up for Drum and Golf Northerly Stakes Day. It's an epic day out at the races. Nathan. And Sean. We just had Ash Barty on yes. talking about a book. You wrote a book. None of us, Nathan and I, haven't wrote a book. No. Yeah. Um, I've go got to- Tracy's book. It's great. Yeah, it's, yeah, Small Bamboo, just about my family um, coming to Australia, to Perth, actually, um, Vietnamese refugees after the war. Um, but Ash was talking about how she got quite emotional speak, uh, writing about Wimbledon. Um, and I really felt for her because I had a moment when I was trying to write my memoir. Um, I had to talk about myself being bullied in primary school and I was told that I had ugly skin, you know, so there was a lot of reliving that and that really got me. That's why I asked her that question about reliving those moments. How long did that follow you through for? Oh, pretty much until I got into TV. So you feel like you're just not good enough and, you, you know, certain looks aren't, you know, appropriate or they don't. Your skin um, they don't is amazing. Fit in. Thank you. <laughs> that's the thing I don't get, and this is the thing I don't get about racist that's comments. Why you're staring at me all the time, no? <laughs> but that's the thing I don't get about racist comments, especially with Asian skin or hair, because Asian skin and hair is amazing. <laughs> so why would anyway? And, and also, you always look so young. No, but there'll be a certain point. That is it I'll just, point? Is that you just reckon? Literally, it, it's not even a transitional thing. It's 
you're old. And I'm. Oh, what do you mean? So like, like, one day you I just feel, wake up, you yes, look in the mirror, really, and really, really, yes, <laughs> and you're like, the old one yes, woman on top of a yes, of, of a I mountain like giving I'm, out sage advice yes, to people right, via that's scrolls. Right, that's right, the via scrolls, <laughs> and I'll have some, you know, of that music playing in the background. Um, no, um, but I feel like I'm already shrinking. I've gone down to shoe size. <laughs> How do you do that? What do you? I don't know. So what, I think I'm shrinking already. What what size shoe were so you? So I'm seven, and, and now I'm, you've gone I'm down to a six. Yes, it's really Tracy weird. Tracy So I feel like I'm already hidden. <laughs> Does your mum or dad ever have a point um, at home where they've measured you so you can go back to see if you sh- if you shrunk as well? Actually, I should I should actually revisit the family home for that. Yeah, yeah. I- I'll ask them. Actually, good idea. I know. I think so, but I think I'm shrinking. <laughs> I'm short enough already. How no, tall hell. are you now? <laughs> I'm five two. You've got no wiggle room, sweetheart. I know. I know. <laughs> You've got no wiggle room. I wouldn't even. Well, I wouldn't even blow dry anymore. your hair in case the, the heat shrunk you even more. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So there's a certain point in my life. <laughs> Nathan, Nat, and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.